Dr. Gorka, thank you for joining me early in the day. I know you're heading off to the airport. A couple of key stories to get to right off the bat. Uh, But first of all, I was sort of shocked by some of these hearings that took place yesterday where basically the implication uh, was that, and and could we bring in Dr. Gorka here now, if you guys don't mind, Uh, I was pretty shocked by this hearing that took place yesterday, which seemed to imply that the Democrats are making an effort to take away nuclear capabilities from the president of the United States. I I think this speaks to the broader theme of nullifying the 2016 election and dehumanizing the president in the process. And I thought this was absolutely outrageous condescension towards the voters, that we voted President Trump, President of the United States, and yet the Democrats are trying to take away uh, capabilities for him to defend our country. And I thought this was extremely outrageous, and I thought it might get lost in the news cycle because uh, there was so much busy stuff. Uh, so I wanted to get your thoughts on it and, and uh, your assessment of that situation. No, I, I completely agree, Alex. It, it is more of it. Look, there's two ways to look at it. And there's some, uh, both of them are correct. Number one is the establishment left and right trying to nullify uh, the choice of the American people in the Electoral College last year. Uh, and secondly, it's actually good news, Alex, because we chose last year at, at the end of the campaign cycle, I, I went on Facebook, I went on Twitter, I posted videos, and I said, whatever you think of Donald Trump, there's one very simple uh, question you have to answer when you go into that booth, fill in that form, or pull the lever. And it's which one of these candidates, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, will keep us safer given the incredible dangers we face and that we have inherited in the last eight years? There's only one right answer to that question. It's Donald Trump. And we've seen him uh, prove that with how we've decimated ISIS in just a few months, how we've rebuilt all our alliances, all our relationships in Asia, in Europe, across the globe. Um, and, And the the establishment wants to undermine that very clear choice. But the good news is the following. This is, they could only do this. They could only behave in such an outrageous fashion if they were still in their ironclad, Kevlar-wrapped bubble. The idea that they're going to countermand the commander-in-chief's authority, that will just, that's them doubling down and not understanding the enormity of what happened on November the 8th, which at the end of the day... Is, is good for all patriots because it means they don't understand uh, the, the, the winds of change are blowing through the establishment. And talk to me about little Bobby Corker's role in all this. He's the, uh, he's the Republican chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee who held the hearing. And uh, it, it is, he said he doesn't support taking away nuclear capabilities from the president, but he engaged in this farcical discussion and he allowed it to take place on his watch. I very much see him as part of the problem, regardless of his personal views on the matter. Uh, absolutely. C- completely part of the problem. The, the, the idea that he's related to this or facilitated this is just more of what we've seen already. Why do we know this? This is the man who, with his amend- amendment, as a so-called Republican, actually facilitated the JCPOA Iran deal. With the Corker Amendment, he eviscerated the Senate's mandate, the Senate's unique authority to be the organ that ratifies treaties that this great nation makes. He removed that by saying you don't need a two-thirds positive vote for a treaty. You, must, you have to have a two-thirds negative vote to stop a treaty. So this is a man who facilitated the Obama regime, and it's no surprise that now he's trying to undermine the Republican president. All right, so Dr. Sebastian Gorka is with me. He's the chief strategist for the MAGA coalition. Uh, and uh, Dr. G, there's a couple other stories I want to ask you about very quickly. Just, and by the way, I, I'm no longer yes. with the coalition since I signed with Fox, so that's just. Oh, okay, update. okay. So, 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 all right. So, so, Dr. G, j- jump to Fox News now. Let's get his bio updated. Uh, production staff, if you guys don't mind. All right, let's. Um, l- l- let me ask you about what's happening in Zimbabwe. Bro- news broke overnight uh, that Robert Mugabe is in military custody. He- he's 93 years old, and, and he- he- apparently there's some sort of a military coup going on. Right now in Zimbabwe, I don't have all the details. It's just breaking very early this morning, long after I uh, was tucked away to bed last night. You're, do you know any details on this, Dr. G, and what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, look, th- this is a, a regime. This is an authoritarian, dictatorial regime. 
Mugabe is a, a remnant, a dinosaur of a previous age who unfortunately uh, is still in power. He dismissed his deputy last week uh, in the hopes that simply uh, he would be able to give the control of the whole country over to his wife. Uh, now um, the reports are that uh, maybe there was an attempt by this fired deputy to um, replace Mugabe. Uh, the, uh, the, the military are now in control. Uh, unfortunately, it looks as if they are in support of the old regime. But in, uh, in, in this country, who knows? So let's, let's wait and see, if, and see if there's actually hope for some kind of uh, restoration of normalcy in this benighted country. Yeah, and Mugabe, I think, has actually been their only leader uh, now that I'm looking at it since their the independence in 1980. Uh, the, he's really been the only yep. premier of of the country. So, uh, of course, they had a, a general on television yesterday. Uh, declaring emphatically this is not a military takeover of the government, but the military is patrolling the streets, and it does appear to be exactly that. So is this something that we should be very skeptical about, any sort of turmoil, uh, always sort of shocking on this level, but or is this potentially a good thing? Uh, look, it, it, uh, rule number one, every report, uh, you know, they, they say about war, every report on the war zone, every initial report is false or wrong. So let's wait and see. It's early days. Uh, I, I am leery. I am uh, conscious of the fact that the, the military right now looks as if they are remaining loyal to the president. But, you know, uh, these things change very, very rapidly. Uh, we will see if there is any kind of counter, any kind of political base that can counter Mugabe and whether the military decide to, to join that base. But right now it's too early to say. Okay, uh, another comment. Another thing I need your commentary on: what the situation in Saudi uh, Arabia right now uh, with MBS seizing power, consolidating power. Uh, it looks like the sort of thing that could be the start of a revolution that could seek to modernize and uh, really moderatize the Saudi regime there, or it could just be another power grab um, and it, more turmoil that could lead to. Get this, Doctor G. Peace in the Middle East, even <laughs> even perhaps uh, uh, perhaps even further off than we thought. So, what's going on here? A, a lot of us in the Breitbart land are pretty optimistic about this, but it is always hard to know. Uh, this is this is a far far more optimistic uh, scenario, and let's give credit where credit is due. The president of the United States went into the heart of the Hijaz, the, the, the homeland of Islam. He went to Riyadh and he gave a speech to more than 50 assembled Arab and Muslim heads of state. He, it wasn't protocol. It wasn't diplomacy. It was very tough talk. He actually said, you must rid your mosques. You must rid your society of the extremists, of the terrorists. And what happened just a few days later, eight days later, nine days later, the Gulf Corporation Council, the GCC, actually took action. They turned on Qatar, the worst uh, supporter of the Muslim Brotherhood and jihadi ideologists amongst themselves. There's been a, a, a blockade, if you will, of Qatar since then. And now uh, it looks as if MBS, who is on our side, who has very good relations with the president, is deciding to clean his own house. This is what we've been waiting for for decades. And it is a very, very good sign, Alex. Wow, very good stuff. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, he's Fox News national security strategist. Pick up his book, Defeating Jihad, The Winnable War. Very win a very readable crash course in modern day jihad and what we need to do to stop it. So highly recommended. Thank you, sir. Thanks for making the time this morning. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. God bless you and the listeners.